a Poundland 2-amp charger, but not just any old Poundland 2-amp charger. This one has been struck by lightning. Not indirectly, it would be in a terrible state if it had. But the story is this. Dear Clive, here is the Poundland USB charger that I promised that went pop during the recent thunderstorms in Devon. Not sure if the two events connected or if it would have happened anyway. I was charging an Apple iPhone at the time, proxy 2.1 amp draw. Is it really? Because technically speaking, I think this uh, has the pins bridged in such a way that it should only really allow about an amp. Um, and these things, they're not actually very good when you actually do try drawing the full 2 amps. Uh, but approximately 2.1 amp draw, I noticed that the bottom USB socket had blown apart at the centre slightly. This had my iPhone at the time. My charging cable was blown clear at the time of the force and the whole house trip switch tripped. I would say that was more than just this. Hope this helps. Brian's interest video for viewers now. Look forward to seeing what went wrong. Stay safe. Frank. P.S. This came from a COVID-free house. That's good to know. Hope it stays that way. Um... So it looks like Frank might have had a wee go at getting into this. I can see the little nibble marks, but you can also see sooty skid marks down round the side. So let's zoom down and explore this together. So I'm trying to remember how these open. I can't remember if they're glued together or if it's just a friction fit. So I shall get the spudger into the side if I can. Mm, I think these might be glued, but I could be wrong. Could be wrong. I shall use unreasonable force. This thing is going to be so sooty inside. I get the feeling there's not going to be much evidence left because you know what happens when lightning strikes things? It tends to be quite dramatic. But so far, so good. Oh, this is a bad sign. I, I'm not sure it's supposed to be that colour. It's a very even colouring. That is a layer of this sort of sticky paper though, isn't it? Oh, it's got everywhere. Wow. That has just got everywhere. Hold on, wait till I sniff it for your, and I'll give you this sort of sensory description. Oh, look at all the wee skid marks around the side. It has let the smoke out and flames out in every direction. Mm, it smells exactly as it should. It smells like blown up electronics. Let's see if we can get this out. That looks intact. Oh, let's see. It, let's see if the fuse blew. Wow. Now, things worth mentioning. Things worth mentioning. If you plug a USB power supply, let's use that. Let's use this fetching purple one as a demonstrator. If you get a standard UK socket and you plug one of these power supplies in, then the next protection in line is a 32 amp socket breaker or a 30 amp fuse. That's quite high. However, if you actually plug in a short extension lead like this Poundland Special with a fuse in the plug. In this case, 13 amp, but you could change it for 3 amp if you've got lots of uh, electronic things plugged in. And then you plug your power supply into the strip, then it's protected locally by the 3 amp fuse, and when it fails, it's less likely to make an absolutely massive bang and blow to smithereens. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. But anyway, I have digressed. Let us continue with the exploration. So, if I recall correctly... This is slightly different. This looks different to the one I took apart. Um, it looks very different to the one I took apart. I may have to buy another one. This one looks as though it may have an active rectifier in the output, and that was the problem with the first ones. Uh, unless it's one of those negotiation chips. No, the middle pins look as though they're connected together. They are just connected together in here. So that might be an active rectifier if that is that is really impressive that's most like switch mode chip the bridge rectifier has gone well everything in the vicinity of it has gone kaboom has the fuse survived let's bring in the meter it's already set to continuity has the fuse survived i'm trying to find the contacts the fuse um i i actually think one of the contacts the fuse is missing yeah, the fuse is blown, but this is not a surprise. I think it was more than more than that went wrong. Um, it's got the same electrical separation with the slots in it and the plastic poking through that. The Poundland stuff is actually very good, and it's got an absolutely whomping great Class Y capacitor there. So, technically speaking, it will have done its best to try and sustain the, the blast, but really... It, that against lightning, the lightning always wins. <laughs> So technically speaking, when an overhead line gets struck by lightning, you'll get a voltage transit appears in the line. And typically, 
most overhead lines should have what are called lightning arresters on them. They're basically a stack of metal oxide arresters, a big stack and an insulator. I'll zoom back out here. And technically speaking, what should happen, I've showed one in a video, I actually uh, took it apart and, and made it detonate, and there's still shrapnel stuck in the ceiling from that instant. But the idea is that uh, you f it looks like an insulator on the overhead line, but with the, the tap of the c connector going to it, to it. But inside is a stack of metal oxide varistors to make up a much higher voltage than the actual normal voltage of the line, say 11 kV. And uh, in the event of a, a lightning strike, the excess voltage, just like you'd find a metal oxide varistor in some electronic stuff, uh, the lightning strike should theoretically... Um, cause the uh, metal oxide varistors to conduct. It should conduct it to ground via a connection at the bottom, but if it then starts failing or the, the too much current flows through for too long, it will actually make the bottom blow off uh, explosively and disconnect it and the cable will dangle down. If they don't spot that's happened or if the lightning arresters aren't there in the first place, it won't arrest the spikes properly. But having said that, a lightning strike is such a sharp spiky transient occurrence that uh, it takes a lot to stop them. It's notorious for blowing up electronic stuff. Um, I'd say that, you know, that's the power to the house probably tripped because lots of other things in the house might have uh, seen that voltage anomaly and they might have tried to clamp it in the process. But this, uh, it's, you know, it's blowing off completely in this area, this high voltage area. I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the separation, I'm looking at the double insulated tails coming well out over that spacer. Uh, all the Poundland stuff, it's, uh, although it's made down to a price, the quality is usually very good. Uh, but not good enough to withstand lightning, apparently. I get the feeling a lot of electronic stuff was blowing up during that time. But there we go. Interesting stuff. I'm also looking at the two 400 volt capacitors here. With the inductor between them, that's lots of good filtering. And then the little uh, low EMF one on this side. In the vicinity of this suspicious chip, is it going to be readable? I shall try and find what that is, but I may have to go and buy a new one because this one is sooty. This one is so sooty that I don't know if that's going to be readable at all. It's, uh, it's, uh, very, it's very black and crispy. Uh, if I do find out what it is, I shall leave it down below in the description because it would be interesting if that was a solid state. Uh, basically, a, almost like a MOSFET that turns on uh, instead of a diode so there's no voltage drop across it. Interesting stuff. So thanks for that, Frank. Uh, sorry that it blew up in your house, but uh, at least your iPhone survived, I guess. I would recommend changing the cable in case it's got suit damage. Um, and hopefully nothing else in your house actually suffered damage in the process. But there we go, a lightning struck Poundland power supply.